Hey everyone, this is Sam from Historic Travels, wishing all of you a good day. Now guys, as I'm sure many of you are already aware, over the past several days an inquiry has been going on where they have been investigating the loss and implosion of the Ocean Gate Titan submersible that imploded while trying to reach the wreck of the Titanic on June 18th, 2023, killing all five people on board. Now remember, when this disaster first occurred, no one knew for certain that the Titan sub had imploded. There was a chance that maybe the sub suffered some kind of massive system failure and everybody on board the sub was simply stuck at the bottom of the ocean and not able to come up to the surface. Now, due to this fact, a massive search and rescue mission was launched to ultimately try to find the Titan sub and save everybody on board. A few days into this search, the Titan sub wreckage was found and it was confirmed beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Titan sub had imploded and everybody on board the sub had unfortunately lost their lives. Now, when the wreckage was found, everyone, myself included, originally thought that the reason the sub imploded had to do with the carbon fiber hull that the Titan was mostly constructed with. You see, carbon fiber isn't that widely used on submersible vessels. Carbon fiber is more commonly used on aircraft, and that is because carbon fiber is better suited to have internal pressure pushing outward on the hull instead of external pressure pushing in. Remember, the pressure around the wreck of the Titanic is around 6,000 PSI, which is 400 times greater than what it is at regular sea level. So imagine that much pressure pushing on the carbon fiber. Yeah, I can totally see why most people would think that that hull was the reason why the Titan sub had in fact imploded. However, over the past several days, a lot of new information has been released due to this inquiry that's going on. And it now appears, according to the evidence, that the breach that caused the implosion wasn't caused by a failure in the carbon fiber hull. More specifically, it looks like there was a breach between the carbon fiber hull and the titanium dome that made up the front of the Titan submersible. You see, attached to both ends of the Titan submersible's pressurized area, there were these two domes made of titanium. The one at the forward end of the sub had a big glass window built into it, or a viewing port. That way those inside of the sub could look out and see the wreck of whatever shipwreck they were looking at, the Titanic or whatever. Now, the titanium dome at the aft end part of the sub, this was mostly there just to seal up the pressurized area. There wasn't a viewing port or anything like that there. In fact, the crew on board the Titan sub couldn't really even access the aft titanium dome very easily because there was a wall there that separated the crew area from that aft titanium dome. In that wall, there was a television screen, but this screen was there mostly so the pilot who sat at the back of the sub could see where the sub was going. And then behind that wall was where a lot of the sub's technical equipment was at. So yeah, there wouldn't really be an easy way to access the aft titanium dome if you needed to at all. Now, if you look at pictures of the Titan sub, you'll notice that there is a cone sticking out from the very back of the sub. Well, it's important to note that this cone was beyond the aft titanium dome. This area wasn't pressurized. So everything that was stored in that little cone tail thing, whatever, was equipment the sub would use that was okay being outside and exposed to the water and the pressure. This is why when you look at titan, uh, titan wreck footage, when you see that cone, there's no evidence of an implosion. This area wasn't pressurized, so there was no implosion of the aft cone area. Now, the way they secured these titanium domes to the carbon fiber hull was by using these titanium rings. They had one for both the forward and aft titanium domes on the Titan submersible. And the way they attached these rings to the carbon fiber hull was by using this very strong adhesive, or I guess just think of it as an extremely strong glue. They put this glue around the exterior of the carbon fiber hull where the ring was going to be lowered and rested into place. And then they put more of this adhesive on the interior of the titanium ring. Then once they had this completely you know, spread around and they knew there weren't any leaks or breaches in it, that they thought anyway, they then lowered the titanium ring onto the carbon fiber hull and secured it into place. And then once this was done, they now had a mounting point for the titanium domes.
Now, if you're looking at this footage of how they secured these rings to the sub and thinking that it's absolutely insane, well, here's the thing. By default, this isn't a bad idea. Other subs have been built in a similar way before. However, whenever you use a very strong adhesive to hold two different materials together, like carbon fiber and the titanium dome, what you have to be careful with is you have to make sure that the different materials will react to the external pressure in the same way. So let's say, just for the sake of argument, that you have one material flex and warp a little bit more due to the extreme pressure than the other material. Well, if this happens, it can put more strain on the adhesive that's holding the two pieces together, and it can potentially cause a failure. And there we have it. That reasoning, that explanation, I guess, that I just gave you guys is the reason why we think the Titan sub imploded. We think that the adhesive that held the carbon fiber hull to the titanium dome failed over time and the water was able to work its way slowly but surely through that adhesive or glue or whatever and breach and find its way into the pressurized area of the Titan submersible, which ultimately caused this horrible disaster and implosion to occur. Now that we have a pretty good idea of how this breach occurred, let's now try to figure out exactly where it happened, on the forward or aft part of the sub. Well, based on this underwater footage, I think we can figure out the answer. Do you see this titanium dome that was blasted out away from the rest of the sub and is just sitting by itself? Well, this titanium dome is part of the forward titanium dome. You can just see a little bit of the viewport sticking out there. What we think happened was the water worked its way through the forward titanium ring, and then when the breach happened, this titanium dome was pushed out away from the rest of the sub by the rebound of the water rushing in. Then as the water came in, it just began crushing and tearing apart everything within the sub. All of this wreckage you are now seeing on camera, this is part of the aft section of the Titan submersible. All of this debris that you see sticking out behind that titanium dome, that's the aft titanium dome and the aft titanium ring you see there. Well, all of that is the carbon fiber that made up the hull. It was all pushed inward as the water forced its way in and caused the implosion. And then all this carbon fiber was forced into the aft titanium dome and the aft titanium ring, which is why you see it squished and pushed in like it is here in the Titan sub's wreckage. Now, it's important to note that in a situation like this where the Titan sub imploded, those that were on board the sub when this disaster occurred they really wouldn't have suffered. You know, the entire implosion event would have been over in less than a fraction of a second or faster than you can blink, and that would have been it. And the forces that occurred during the implosion were so great that there really wouldn't be anything left of the bodies of the people that were inside the sub when the implosion happened. When you're talking about these kind of forces, people basically stop being biology and they're just turned into atoms, for lack of a better word. Now... Sometimes when implosions happen, and I used to think this, depending on where the implosion occurred, there's sometimes an audible warning that something is about to happen. Those on board the sub would have heard the hall groaning and all of that in the moments leading up to the implosion, and if they heard that, maybe they could try to ascend more quickly and get out of the danger area. But in this kind of situation, where it looks like it was the adhesive or the glue around the titanium ring that failed, or something wrong with the ring, I don't think there would have been much of an audible warning at all. I honestly think those on board the sub had no idea that this was about to happen. I think that they were just enjoying the dive and looking forward to seeing the wreck of the Titanic. And then suddenly and without warning, a fraction of a second later, the sub imploded and they were all gone. And my theory is further backed up by the text communication logs that were sent from the Titan submersible during its descent to the Titanic wreck site. The animation you see on camera right now shows the Titan submersible during its descent to the Titanic wreck on the day of the implosion. And it also shows the text communication logs between the Titan sub and the ship that brought it out to the Titanic wreck site, the Polar Prince, during its entire descent. And they also matched up the timing when the text communication logs show up to where the Titan sub was during its descent to the Titanic wreck site. And what this animation shows is that everything seemed to be going okay on the Titan sub throughout the entire descent. 
no one seemed alarmed or concerned at all. And then when the sub was just a few hundred meters away from the Titanic wreck, the last message sent from the Titan sub simply said, dropping two weights. And it appears that this message wasn't sent in a way that means that they were in distress and rapidly trying to climb up to the surface. It appears that they simply sent this message because they anticipated reaching the bottom of the ocean, which was just a few hundred meters away, and they were simply just trying to slow their descent. But a few seconds after this final message was sent, all contact with the Titan sub was lost. So honestly, I really do think that they were enjoying the ride. There was no audible sign or any sign at all, really, that anything was about to go wrong. And then a few seconds later, the implosion happened and everybody on board the sub lost their lives. So yeah, now that we all have a pretty good idea of what went wrong with the Titan sub during its final dive, the last thing that I wanna to touch on in this video, and honestly, I got so angry the more I learned about this from listening to the inquiry, was the sheer incompetence of OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush. I honestly believe after listening and learning about everything, that most of the fault, if not all of the fault, for this horrible disaster lies with him. This man, it seems like he was a man who was obsessed with cutting corners and trying to cut costs wherever possible. He tried to build the Titan sub as cheap as he could, and he never got the sub certified or checked out because that was just more expense and it took more time, so he didn't bother with it. And he probably didn't do it because he knew that due to the corners he cut and the cost he saved, that the sub would not be certified, so he didn't do it. What the heck? And Rush was also the type of guy that if you went against him for anything, even if you had valid reason to do so, he simply fired or ignored you. This happened to one of the chief engineers of the Titan Submersible who told Rush that he would never get in that thing and that thing could not go to the Titanic. What did Rush do? He fired him. Now, one thing about this engineer, believe it or not, guys, he helped design the solid rocket boosters for the space shuttle. So if he tells you that there's something wrong with your design, I don't know about all of you, but I'm gonna listen to him. Just saying, just saying. But yeah, and I also learned about a few other things that happened with Rush in the past. Like I heard that in a different submersible called the Cyclops, he actually crashed it into the side of the Andrea Doria when he had another employee in the sub with him trying to tell him, don't do this, don't do this, be careful, don't do this. And Rush ignored him and crashed the sub. They were able to get out, but it was still a very dangerous situation. I also heard that the Titan sub was left out in the elements, like left outside in the elements for like a year or so when they weren't using it. Don't know if that's true or not, but honestly, it wouldn't surprise me. I also heard that the sub was struck by lightning during a test dive. I don't know if they fixed it or not. And I've even heard other reports that when they were testing the Titan sub, that the hull would make weird sounds and groan and pop. And listen, the reason why Rush thought it was okay to use this sub to go down to the Titanic is absolutely beyond me. So yeah, in conclusion, ultimately the Titan sub was a terrible disaster, but it was also a disaster that should have never happened. If the proper procedures with building these subs had been followed, if the sub had gotten you know certified and checked out and everything, I honestly think this disaster would have never happened. I hope that we can take the lessons that we have learned from this horrible disaster and do everything we can to make sure that something like this never happens again. This is Sam from Historic Travels. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it a like. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much. It really helps out a lot. And I'll see you on the next one. Y'all take care.